guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. Have a new me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. As you can see, today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Course. What special boy am I doing this time? Well, well, let me tell you, good lord, I can't believe I'm on the sixth one already. I am going to be going down Bjorn's path because many of you have requested him, and I'm quite curious myself. He seems like he has a lot that he's not speaking about. So I'm curious to see what's going on with this lovable, wholesome big fella. So yeah, this will be a Bjorn route for those who are interested. Alright guys, let's jump right into it. <clears throat> I've uh, taken the liberty of skipping the intro and going right to where we meet him for the first time. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Alright. Ugh, why did I pack so much? Cursing myself in my head, I carry my unreasonably heavy bag in both paws. I need to learn to pack only the stuff I really need. Do it soon. Oh, yep, there he is. This time, it's my turn to bump into someone. Oh, hello. In front of me, walking down the stairs, stands a bear. From the downwards perspective, he looks outright imposing, and I can't help but feel a little intimidated by his presence. Ah, oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to where I'm going. I packed a bit too much, and I had to carry all this upstairs. Oh, don't worry. Here, let me help you. The bear laughs loudly and takes my bag from me, carrying it upstairs with ease. He's big, although I can only speculate if it's more muscles or fat, and it looks like the bag is nothing to him. That's a very fortunate turn of events for me. I was sure those stairs would be the death of me. Okay, where to? Room number 17. Should be right around here. We find my room easily. I unlock the door and swing it open. Okay, here you are. The bear drops my bag at the door and turns to leave. Hey, thanks! <laughs> no problem. Glad I could help. I need to go fetch the rest of my stuff. <laughs> See you again later, probably. Picking up the bag, I turned into the room, and that's when it hits me. I didn't even introduce... Blah, blah, word salad. I didn't even introduce myself. Hey, wait, what's your name? The bear is already gone, though. Well, I'll catch him later. I sigh and enter the room, closing the door behind me. Need is, the, need is the first word that pops into my head when I look around. The room isn't big, but doesn't feel cramped either. If anything, I'm amazed at how well they've used the space. The walls here are also wooden, with one tasteful painting hanging above the bed for decoration. The bed, covered by a colorful patchwork, is big enough to fit at least two people comfortably. There's also a small wardrobe, a desk, and a chair. They're all minimalistic in style, fitting well with the room. A thick carpet covers the wooden floor. The colors remind me of a meadow or sunset sky. An ever-changing tapestry of vibrant colors and cloudy white. Oh, I'm going to love staying here. It feels like home, while simultaneously being better than any home I've ever had. I'll have plenty of time to look around, though. For now, I can just drop off my stuff and head back to the lobby. Maybe I'll check if Miko got his room yet. Or I could go pay Lake a brief visit. Let's, uh... Stay here. Or I could just stay here and unpack. Actually... Bjorn does sometimes hang around Miko. Let's go uh, around Lake. Let's go. Actually, yeah, he hangs around both of them. All right. It's been a few minutes already, but if I go now, maybe I can still catch Miko before he gets his key. Taking only my camera bag with me, I leave the room and lock the door behind me. Oh, Miko! Walking around the corner, I see Miko at the end of the corridor. He waves to someone behind him before before turning around and noticing me. Hey, Carvin. You got your key yet? Yeah, I got room number three. Should be right here. Need any help with that? I point at the huge bag Miko was dragging behind him. Being smaller than me, Miko often had to rely on me with carrying stuff. Well, at least back when we were at the middle school together. Used to that, I ask almost automatically. Weird how my habits from years ago stayed with me all that time. I could use some. It's pretty heavy. I grab the bag and try to lift. Oh, damn, it's even heavier than it looks. Where's the bear? Where's the bear? By the way, who are you waving to? No, the Tanuki that studies in the same department as, as me approached me when I was waiting for the key. Ah, yes. He, Travis. He's going to be on the next one. We hadn't... <clears throat> sorry. God, my nose is so stopped up today, guys. Sorry about that. We hadn't talked before, but he remembered me, so he came up to say hello and we talked for a bit. Maybe I was wrong about Miko being bad at making friends. Not even an hour has passed and he already met someone. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't assume that he's just the same little wolf I knew three years ago. That's a lot of time to change. Hell, I feel like I turn into a completely different person every two or three years. We have so much catching up to do. We haven't talked almost at all about the time we spent on we spent separately. Hell, since we met again at the university, we didn't really even talk about the time we spent together. 
though I'm not sure if I'm ready for this yet. Carvin? Y yes? We're here? I got so lost in thought I didn't notice Miko had stopped. No! Oh, right. Do you want to come in for a moment? Sure, yeah. I, I can't stay for long, though. I have to. I haven't unpacked anything yet. Just drop off my stuff. That Miko's room is so nice. Bounce lighting! RTX on! <laughs> Miko walks into the door and I follow him, lifting the bag to avoid bumping into the doorstep. His room looks similar to mine, which is no surprise. What surprises me, though, is that he has two single beds instead of one like mine. You asked for a double room? Hmm? No, oh, no. Coach Devin said that almost all the rooms here are double, so even if we ask for a single one, we still might get one with two beds. I still have it all for myself, though. I see. That's neat. Where should I put the bag? No, just anywhere. I'll unpack it right away. What's inside, by the way? I swear it wouldn't be heavier if you stuffed it with rocks. Just some instruments, just some instruments and effects. The stuff I thought I might need. I walk up to the window and draw open the curtains, looking outside. It's not snowing as much anymore at the moment, but it'll probably pick up again soon. The view, even from the ground floor, is still spectacular. The guest house is surrounded by a forest, and in the distance, some hills hide beneath the thick layers of fog. Some white fluff is covering everything in sight. I look around, admiring the serene landscape, and then, at the edge of the forest, perched on a tree, I see it again. Look! An eagle! I quickly unzip my bag and take out my camera. I turn it on, nervously waiting for it to start responding. The screen is still black. Ah! Stupid of me! I take off the lens cap, point the camera in the direction where I spotted it, and look through the viewfinder. It's gone again. I feel a wave of cold sweat run over my back. I've lost it. I was too slow. You didn't catch it? I turn around. Miko, leaning in, is looking at me with concern. Seeing him up close for the first time in three years, I realize that I'd forgotten how blue his eyes are. Mm-hmm. Looks like it. It wasn't quick enough. I feel the urge to kick myself in the shin for this. I've seen it twice today, and both times I was too slow. Miko takes a step back and pats my shoulder gently, smiling. It's a small gesture, but it helps, and my anger slowly fades away. Actually, I think it's the first time he did that since the middle school. We used to be really close, and hugging each other whenever we felt like it was just the usual for us. Since we reunited, we kept much more distance between us. Until now, Miko didn't try getting closer. So I was unsure if he'd still be okay with it. Thank you. I really missed him. Although, how on earth did you want to get a good shot through the window? Oh, I put a polarizing filter on this lens. Just in case we could, we would witness something interesting during the ride. I unscrew the filter from the lens and show it to Miko. He takes the ring and rotates it in his fingers, observing how it brightens and darkens the image depending on the angle. At a good angle, it cleans out all the reflections nicely. It would still need a lot of luck to get a good shot, though. I glance outside again, just in case, but behind the window only snowflakes dance in the arctic air. Meanwhile, Miko opens his bag and starts unpacking his stuff. Do you need any help with that? Sweet of you to ask, but there's not much but there's not much but there's not not that much of it. I seriously doubt that, but I'm not going to press. Maybe he's afraid to let me handle his gear. I've always been a bit clumsy. I better leave him now and go unpack myself. The clock is still ticking. I'm sorry that this visit was so brief and but I should be going already. Sure, I understand. Visit me sometime later, too, okay? Sure thing, we'll have plenty of time. See you later. See you, Carvin. So cute. <coughs> One second, what was that? It's really nice to see him again and spend some time together. It takes me back to my adolescence and all those memories I have of it. Some rose-tinted and drenched in warm sunlight, some bittersweet but precious. I wonder, does Miko think back to those times once in a while? If so, he didn't mention it at all. Maybe he doesn't remember. What matters is that we're back together. I really missed him, and seeing him smile makes me happy, too. And he seems truly happy for the camp. I haven't seen him this cheerful in, well, maybe ever? I wonder what view I have from here. I should be able to see more of the landscape than from the ground floor, at least. I pick up my bag and take out my instant camera. It's only for special occasions, but this certainly is one. Walking up to the window, I take a look outside. From here, I can see a few lakes and clearings, spots of shimmering water and white splotches between the trees. Soft white fluff is covering everything in sight, and it's starting to snow again. A blanket of gray clouds hangs heavy above the land, casting shadows over everything. I love this kind of weather. There's something mysterious about dark days like today, as if the earth is covering itself in snow and shade to hide its secret from our eyes. 
The snowflakes dance in the air before my eyes, blown around by the wind, blind and silent. I wish I could see some more, some more birds, but that's unlikely, especially with the snow getting heavier again. I could spend the whole day just looking at the landscape, though. I open the window and the cold wind pushes in, ruffling my fur. It smells of pines and earth. I turn on the camera and lean on the windowsill, creating a bipod with my arms. A quick look into the viewfinder to find the right frame. I swiftly close the window. The air in the room is much chillier now, and my fur is all bristled from the unfriendly wind, but I have my photo. I pull it out from the camera and quickly stow it in the camera bag to shield it from the light. If I just left it in the open, it would have been ruined. Instant photos require a lot of care. Hmm, I still have a few minutes left to unpack. I take my shoes off. Ugh, I should have done it before walking straight across the room and put on the lighter ones I, put, I took from my bag. The next few minutes are spent on emptying my bag and putting everything in its newly assigned places. I'm done just before the 30 minutes have passed. I take the photo out of the bag, careful not to touch the surface, otherwise I could leave paw prints on it and never be able to get rid of them. It turned out pretty much as I wanted. The ominous sky fills most of the frame, outstretched above the fuzzy dark green splotch of the forest beneath, all behind the swirl of snowflakes. You never know what you'll end up with when taking an instant photo, or using a film in general, and that's precisely what I love about it. When I know exactly what, what photo I want to take, I use my digital camera. But when I want to capture not a scene, but a mood or a feeling, something fleeting and delicate, I take out the instant camera. Often what I end up loving the most in those photos are the imperfections. Like the overexposed white spaces where something shouldn't be, but uh, where something should be, but isn't. There's just a blank space left for your imagination. These photos seem alive in a way, and that's what I'm aiming for here. I want a reminder of this place and this moment for the future me. A noble cause. I can sense that there's something significant about this camp, as if something important is bound to happen here. My feline senses tell me that. I grab my camera bag, but put the exposed photo in a side pocket and leave the room. The corridors are all empty. Everyone must have already gotten gotten there. A quick glance at my watch tells me it's 1331, so I'm barely late by a minute. But lunch is the last thing I'd want to be late to. I open the door and enter the cafeteria. Looks like I'm not the last one. Most of the seats are occupied, but some of the students I saw on the bus are not here yet. The cafeteria is spacious and pretty modern, much better than what I would expect from a rural guest house. Some plants are lined up against the southern wall with the against the southern wall with the windows, and lamps hanging from the ceiling light up the room. I love the way those lamps look. I see two tables with people I know. Miko is sitting on one end of the room, and and that bear I met earlier in a raccoon I don't know. And Lake is sitting at the table next to that next to that one together with Coach and Rune. Lake notices me first and waves to me enthusiastically. I'm gonna sit with Miko. Sorry, Lake. You're not a bear. I hesitate for a moment, but I wave back to Lake and walk up to the table where Miko is sitting and take the spot next to him. He notices me and greets me with a warm smile. I don't know the others, but <laughs> at least I'm, I'm with my friend. And Lake. I'll catch up with him after lunch. You late for lunch? That's unlike you. Yeah, but at least I have a cool photo. And I, and I took too much stuff, as always. I probably took twice as much stuff as you did, you know, and I was here on time. Anyway, the food isn't here yet, but it should be in a minute. I think we've met already, right? You've helped me with my bags at the stairs. <laughs> That's right. You're carving, yes? Miko mentioned you just a few minutes ago. The bear sitting on the other side of the table leans in and introduces himself in a considerably low, although soft voice. I introduced myself, yeah, earlier. Blah. I introduced myself, er myself earlier. Sorry. I'm Bjorn. I study, you know, I study neuroscience. Bjorn. Really? Maybe he's just making fun of me? I glance sideways at Miko to see if he's laughing, but he seems completely serious. Yeah, that's me. Good to meet you again. And likewise. Sorry for leaving you like that, but I don't like leaving my bags unattended. As I look at him again now, he doesn't seem intimidating anymore. Despite his size, he seems rather soft-spoken, more like a gentle giant than a brute. Also, if my bag was nothing to him, what the hell did this guy pack to have my head have to make multiple trips? You two know each other? You two know each other yet? He gestures to the raccoon, sitting next to him, and I shake my head. This is Travis. And I'm studying neuroscience too. I started this year. Travis is much smaller than the bear sitting next to him, and much more energetic. He has that lively, eager spark in his eyes. Raccoons rarely live live in this part of the world, and he speaks with basically no accent. I wonder if he's from around here. You're a raccoon, yes? Are you from here, or did you move here for your studies? No, I'm not a raccoon. I'm a tanuki. See this tail? No stripes. He smirks, lifting his long, fluffy tail. No stripes indeed. 
Oh, this must be the Tanuki Miko, uh, Miko mentioned earlier. Don't worry, that's a common mistake. I don't mind. And I was born in the U.S., but my mom is from Japan, so I'm half American, half Japanese. Nice to meet you, Carbon. Nice to meet you, too. I smile meekly, still feeling stupid over that mistake. He might say whatever he wants, but it's always rude to mistake someone's species. I want to apologize to him, but I'm interrupted by the waiter putting plates with our meals on our table. Ooh. I could swear the Tanuki's eyes gleamed with pure lust. Before us are two sizable dishes, one with what looks like a root vegetable stew, and the other with some sort of a salad. There is also a basket with bread and a plate with sunshine buns, each wrapped in paper for convenience. Ooh, I love those. Soft and fluffy smelling of cardamom and cinnamon, they became my go-to dessert after moving to Norway. Oh, God, Jesus, how am I going to pronounce this? Um, Rekost... Rekost Salat. Rekost Salat and turnip stew. Nice. Light and tasty. Good choice for lunch. Looking at him, I would never guess he likes his lunch light. He's built like a tank. I bite my tongue and refrain from inquiring about this, though. I've just met him, and what a way to ruin a new friendship that would be. Looks yummy. What do you usually eat for lunch? Oh, well, it's usually a few sandwiches, then a sweet roll or two. Is that the usual here? <laughs> Not really. In Norway, we usually have plain sandwiches for lunch. One topping each, nothing more. It's sort of a tradition to make the lunch as uninteresting as possible. Oh, so it looks like he simply has a sweet tooth. He gestures with a spoon in his paw as he speaks, looking pretty funny. Very dull tradition, if you ask me. It started with some government-funded program providing lunches for children, back when Norway was a poor country. But we're not there, but we're not anymore. I'd rather have something that brightens up my day. I, uh, I agree with that. I will never understand why you Norwegians are doing this to yourselves. Like, there are so many good things you can eat, and yet you eat and drink your dark bread with some kind of tasteless paste every day. Travis is already pointing some, point, putting some thick stew on his plate, along with a few slices of rye bread. <laughs> be, glad, be glad that we got a lunch like this today. Oh, well, I am. He grabs his glass, full of what looks like orange juice, and lifts it up theatrically. To our college! Finishing the glass in one big beastly gulp I never would expect he's capable of, he puts it back and digs into his food. It's a Itadaki Masu! It would have a much greater effect if he had a pair of chopsticks in his paws instead of a spoon. Yep. I glance at Miko. He's looking somewhere sideways, not really paying attention to us. If I didn't know him any better, I would have thought that he doesn't want to talk with us. But I do, and I know that he is always silent with new groups of people. He's friendly, of course, but he needs some time to get used to everyone. And the louder and more enthusiastic the company is, the more he retreats into himself. Now, I am going to drag you into this conversation. Hey, Miko, what do you usually have for lunch? Miko jumps a little in his seat and turns toward us. I hope I didn't give him a heart attack. Uh, usually I make myself a meal replacement drink. I don't need anything fancy. Wait, really? I know you're not too fussy about food, but I didn't expect that. Meal replacement drink? What's that? It's a shake powder mix that has all the nutrients your body needs. It's as convenient and fast as it gets. Preparation takes literally a minute. It's a really interesting concept. On one pot, it's nutritious and healthy, at least in theory. On the other, it's as processed as food can get. Yoran clearly doesn't seem convinced either, and Miko is getting even more flustered. Oh, maybe that wasn't the best topic to bring up. Well, it takes some time to get used to, but it's not bad. I grab the salad spoon and start putting food on the plate for Miko. So today you're dining like a king. Is this enough, or do you want some more? That's enough. I'm not that hungry yet. And thank you. Looking back at the rest, I can see that Bjorn observes us with amusement. Am I doing something weird? When I'm done, I put some stew and salad on my plate, too. Whew, that smells good. Until now, I didn't really realize how hungry I was. I grab a slice of rye bread and start eating the stew. It has a rich, earthy taste, and the turnips add a crunchy texture. It's flavored masterfully, not bland and not too strong, with a hint of thyme and smoked paprika. Oh, that's good. I needed that. It is indeed. Bjorn was quite a bit quiet at first, too, but with a good meal in front of him, he seems to open up a bit more. He seemed to have a bit of an unapproachable aura to him, but maybe that was just the first impression. Suddenly I hear the door of the cafeteria opening. I turn in their direction and see a figure clad in dark clothes entering the room. And they're walking in our direction. He sits down next to Bjorn and starts to put food on his plate, all without saying anything. I look at Bjorn questioningly, but he only shrugs, apparently clueless himself. The newcomer is definitely a cat, not very tall, with an average build and dyed hair, and is that a pentagram hanging from his neck? 
can't really even see it now. Hello, I'm Travis and I'm a freshman studying neuroscience. How about you? I exhale with relief. Travis's kindness is stronger than the stranger's awkwardness. I was afraid that we'd spend the rest of the lunch in silence. I'm Klaus. <laughs> looks like that's all we get. Looks like, looks like that's all we'll get from him. So anyway, Carvin, you're from Finland, like Miko, yeah? Phew. Thank you for breaking the silence. Yeah, the land of the land of lakes is my homeland. And you were friends, right? But I don't like the direction in which this conversation is going. Yeah, that's right. We've known each other for quite some time now. We went to the same middle school, though we lost contact after it. I feel like I stopped replying to him because I was a stupid dumbass. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it right there. I want to thank you so much for watching this first step into Bjorn's journey. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!